So in verse 3, you'll see that the word keep is introduced into this psalm as uh, the psalmist notices how God keeps the universe that he treads on. And so he assumes, how much more does God keep me to? If God keeps the universe and this consistency of the sun rising and the sun setting and the mountain standing still, he's like, man, how much more does the Lord keep me? And so from verses 3 on to verse 8, this, this, this psalm mentions keep, the word keep, six times. Uh, and, and now an important thing to know is that a synonym for keep in the Hebrew is guard. It carries the idea of guarding. Uh, hence the reason why this can be called the soldier's psalm. Um, and so from verses 3, it's like God is saying to us through this psalmist, you have a personal bodyguard, and he is God himself. It's not a guardian angel, but God himself, because that is all that we need. Um, and so from this point on, from verses 3 to 8, we're going to look at how God keeps us in six ways. Okay, we're going to look at how God keeps us in six ways because it's mentioned six times. So first, God keeps us all by himself. That's what we're going to look, look at first. Notice that from verses 3 to 5, God is introduced as our keeper, and the emphasis is on him as our keeper, guard, instead of on how he keeps. In other words, the emphasis is on who our keeper is more than how he is keeping us. With that in mind, listen to verses 3 and 5. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither, neither sleep, slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. You see, this is simply describing God as our keeper. And this should remind us that God is our personal soul guard. As verse 5, five says, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your keeper. That's personal language. Now the question is, do we believe that God is our personal guard in, in all aspects of life? Notice verse 8. It says, The Lord will keep your going in and your coming out from this time forth forevermore. He is your soul guard in all places and points in life. Uh, and so do we know that our do we know our, our body soul guard? No, no, no. The, the Hebrew name for our soul guard in this section is Yahweh. Um, in your Bible translation, it probably looks like Lord with all capital letters. Um, and, and that's because it's capturing the most personal name for God that Israel would use in the Old Testament. Um, so personal that they would only write out the vowels, uh, or I'm sorry, they would, I think they would leave the, the vowels out um, of his name because it was so personal. And, and so it captures this word Yahweh a.k.a. Lord, captures the idea that God has chosen to reveal himself to his people instead of conceal himself from his people. Um, and the way that God reveals himself to them is through a personal covenant with his people, as he does for us too. Um, it's like a personal co covenant that you think of with marriage, a marriage covenant between a husband and wife. Um, and and this, this name of God begins in Exodus 3 as God uh, tells Moses, his name from the burning bush, and says, I am who I am. That's this name here. Um, so the name of God reminds us that God is our unique bodyguard. This is a unique name for the Lord. He is our unique bodyguard. He is one that isn't just a higher hand for us. He is your God. He is our God. He is our bodyguard. He is an employed, an employed bodyguard. God is more like a father figure kind of bodyguard here. And we're meant to know him and he and, and, and he knows us from the inside out. Think of Psalm 139 where it says uh, God is, is intimately acquainted with all of our ways. Um, and so not only does this bodyguard know the outside of us and is he protecting our body, but he's protecting our soul. He knows every inside characteristic of us. And that's why verse 7 can say the Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. He will keep your soul. And so God is a guard who is like protecting his children, a father protecting his children. And, uh, and, and really, God doesn't need to study our whereabouts because he's omniscient and omnipresent, but we do need to study his. It's kind of backwards when you think about it. Normally, the bodyguard keeps track of where the person he is guarding lives, uh, but in this case, it seems like we are meant to be studying our bodyguard. God is our bodyguard. 
and he won't lose sight of us. But we need to make sure that we don't lose sight of him. The Lord is your keeper. He is your keeper. Do you know him? And are you studying him? He is your shade on your right hand. He is, he is the one who will not slumber. He will not slumber or sleep. Do we know our body here? Do we know the characteristics of him? And so really, basically, I see verses 3 to 5 saying, you have a bodyguard, and his name is the Lord God Almighty. Do you believe that? Do you believe that, and that he made heaven and earth? Um, do you believe that you have a kind of bodyguard that can stop the sun in order to win your battles, like he does in Joshua 10, where the sun stands still? Because he's the maker of heaven and earth. And relating to that issue of time, do, do you realize that your body soul guard will not slumber? He will not slumber. But not only that, do you believe that he will not slumber or sleep? He will not slumber or sleep. In other words, our soul guard doesn't get tired. He doesn't get sloppy either. He works with 100% work ethic. He doesn't need another soul guard to take his place for a potty break or a drink of water. Because he doesn't need anything. He doesn't get thirsty. And he doesn't run out of energy. He doesn't need to end his shift because he doesn't get tired. We end shifts because we get tired. He does not. So a natural application for us when we realize that God does not sleep or slumber in his defense over us, you'll see in verses 3 to 4, is that we can rest. We can rest because God does not. And also you can't protect yourself. Like God is. He's your guard. You're not your own guard. And so take a break. Psalm 127, I think, builds on that concept when it says, Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. So you see, God is guarding our home, he's guarding our city, and he's guarding our church. He's guarding our everyday life. But not only that, he is building it up. And when we see God as our guard and builder, and builder, it means that we don't eat the bread of anxious toil. Like Psalm 127 verse 3 says. And that means that we aren't anxious in the way that we work. Whether that be for your family or working in church ministry. And when we understand that God is our guard and doesn't slumber or sleep, it, it leads us to ease up on our work a bit and take a nap and enjoy life a little bit more. Enjoy a good night's sleep. You know, maybe many people feel guilty these days for taking a nap. Um, maybe you can't sleep not because you're tired or not tired, but because you're anxious. But when we understand that God is our guard and doesn't slumber or sleep, it prevents us from overlooking or overworking, uh, overworking, and it, and it purifies the way that we work as well. It puts peace in our heart to know that God is protecting our life from all evil and disaster. And as verse 7 says, so that we can work without the fear that evil and disaster will strike us, which makes us work more effectively and efficiently by taking a break and resting. How can that be more efficient and effective work when we take a break and rest? Well, it's because God didn't design us to be a 24-7 society or people because he is. When we rest, God works. And when we rest, God guards us. And so know God's worth at work ethic of verses 3 uh, to 4 that does not slumber or sleep in his guardianship over us does something to our work ethic. Prevents us from overworking first, and it leads us to place our faith in his mighty work. Uh, really, when we overwork, we are competing with God's work, work ethic. And when uh, we see when we see God as our 24-7 hour worker, it just puts balance into uh, our work week and how much we dedicate to working.